This week on Channel 8 News, we'll be taking a look at the bombing of an art school in Ukraine, along with new research pertaining to the Omicron variant. After that, we'll be looking at the Sunshine Protection Act, the increase in student minimum wage here at Northwest, and more. Your Channel 8 News starts right now. Thanks for tuning in to Channel 8 News. The show provides news coverage on the Northwest Missouri State University campus and the Maryville community. I'm Kirsten Stokes, filling in for Courtney Rowe. And I'm Alexis Kuhner. Before we get into this week's stories, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications button for all the latest news and updates. Russia is raising the stakes, keeping up its brutal onslaught against Ukraine. Local officials in the battered city of Maripol say an art school being used as a shelter has been bombed by Russian forces. Officials say 400 people were sheltering inside, and there's no word yet on the number of casualties. CNN's Salma Abdelaziz reports. Yet another horrifying attack on innocent civilians, we're being told, took place in the early hours of this morning in a place that's being described as hell on earth. Mariupol, of course, a besieged city, a place that's been overrun by Russian forces now for weeks there. We understand in the early hours today, uh, an art school that was being used as shelter by 400 people. I am talking 400 families, women, children, elderly people just trying to find refuge, trying to find safe haven in that city where we hear the sound of explosions continue all throughout the night. Still, this group of people just trying to find safety, Ukrainian officials tell us, were bombarded by Russian warplanes. Now, it's extremely difficult, as you said, to get information out of the city. We don't know the number of casualties yet or the extent of damage uh, to that art school, but it comes just days after a very similar attack because there is a pattern of behavior that's emerging here from Russian forces. Uh, a very similar attack on a theater building there, uh, at least 1,300 people or up to 1,300 people were sheltering so desperate they were to be spared from Russian bombardment that they wrote the word children as big as they could on the grounds of that theater. Uh, but still, of course, uh, uh, Russian forces saw them as a legitimate target, uh, apparently. President Zelensky says that what's happening in Mariupol is an act of terrorism against the people of Mariupol. He says Russian forces are committing war crimes across this country. And what's concerning is that many Western intelligence sources say we're going to see more attacks like this, that this is part of the Russian military strategy here in Ukraine, that as the Russian military increasingly feels corner, it, cornered, it runs out of supplies, it's running out of troops. We understand there's been serious miscalculations on the battlefield, according to U.S. officials. This morning, we're hearing a fifth general killed, uh, according to Ukrainian officials. What they're going to do, we're Told is turning turn to these barbaric tactics and essentially try to bomb cities into submission. Thanks, Selma. The Omicron virus has stronger staying power than other COVID-19 variants, according to new research. But health analysis say there's no reason to get overly concerned. Findings from two recent studies reveal Omicron survived about three times as long on surfaces like plastic and skin compared to the original variant. Those involved in the study say that should be taken in stride since the experimental conditions are far more conducive for virus growth than they are in everyday life. Researchers also say people are more likely to test positive for Omicron by inhaling it than getting it through touch. Still, scientists say the findings are a good reminder to keep frequently touched spots like doorknobs and handrails as sanitized as possible. When we come back, we'll be taking a look at the Sunshine Protection Act as well as the increase in student minimum wage. Don't go away. Northwest Missouri State University's four student media outlets, KNWT Television, KZLX LPFM, The Northwest Missourian, and Tower Yearbook have been ranked among the top in the nation for the College Media Association Pinnacle Awards. The Northwest Student Media Department takes pride in ensuring students are up to date on the latest technology, equipment, industry secrets, and offers profession-based learning experiences from day one. To support Northwest Student Media, check out our content on all of our platforms. Northwest Tower Yearbook has dedicated over a century to documenting life on campus and in the Maryville community. The award-winning organization has numerous pacemaker awards and a spot in the Associated Collegiate Press Hall of Fame. Learn more about Tower at the handles below. Welcome back to Channel 8 News, I'm Alexis Kuhner. And I'm Kirsten Stokes. Here's something everyone in the U.S. Senate can agree on, an extra hour of sunlight. 
The chamber passed a measure Tuesday that would make daylight saving time permanent and get rid of setting clocks back in the fall. It passed with bipartisan support unanimously. Republican Senator Marco Rubio from Florida sponsored the Sunshine Protection Act. He says he doesn't know if the House will take it up. That would be necessary before President Joe Biden could sign it into law. If it does happen, the change wouldn't go into effect until next November because transportation schedules have already been built out until then. In another news, the Northwest Board of Regents approved an increase in tuition and fees for students to support the increase in student minimum wage last week. The proposal was first approved by the Student Senate on March 15th, increasing the student minimum wage to $10.30 an hour from $8.60 an hour, which has been the student minimum wage since 2019. However, an increase of $4 per credit hour has been included as well. President of Culture Clarence Green also acknowledged a recruiting issue that the university has had due to low wage and addressed it by saying an increase in pay would curb that. Don't go away because we'll be looking at Tri Sigma's philanthropy event along with how a local organization is making a difference in the local economy. Stay tuned for more. Like other organizations on and around campus, here, the students do it all. KWT is a student-run and student-produced television station. To support this content and Northwest Media students, you can go to our YouTube channel at KWT Channel 8 and watch the latest shows or even enjoy blasts from the past. Welcome to the world of Gen 2, your favorite show for all things gaming and rarely tech-related. Let's see what Pokemon the crew chooses. Step aside, I'll go first. Hmm, I'm gonna pick on the leaderboard. Good choice. I'm gonna stick with my favorite, The Rundown. Dang, I wanted that one. No, actually, this one's way better. I choose Apex and Chill. What? <laughs> you guys want the best one for me. I choose GameCube. Watch their journeys on the KNWT Channel 8 YouTube page. Welcome back to Channel 8 News, I'm Alexis Kuhner. And I'm Kirsten Stokes. From Monday, March 21st through Wednesday the 23rd, the Tri Sigma sorority at Northwest will be holding a memorial week for Karen Hawkins. Hawkins was a student at Northwest in the 90s who was a victim of sexual violence and was killed. The Tri Sigma sorority holds various events throughout the week to celebrate her life while bringing awareness to sexual violence. The events include a presentation by a detective of the case, Randy Strong, which is happening on Monday. Tuesday, a self-defense class will be offered by Officer Christina Martinez. And Wednesday, there will be a silent memorial walk followed by a Cheesin' for Karen event taking place afterward, concluding the memorial week. This past weekend, 23 local businesses participated in the Maryville Open House event, hosted by Holly Cronk, the leader of Make It Maryville. This organization focuses on encouraging people to shop locally and invest in small town economy. I sat down with Holly to get the inside scoop on this organization and how it's affected the Maryville community. Some call it the center of the earth, others home of the Bearcats, but today it's a place where local shopping is key for small town economics. Maryville, Missouri has over 50 local businesses and they are essential for seeing a micro level change in the community. Shop owners like Holly Cronk realize that even though these businesses have their own specific niche, there is a positive outcome when our community comes together. Today's event here that went on was the Spring Open House. This year we had 23 locally owned small businesses involved and the purpose for it is really to just get people out to shop local, um, to support their community and see what all Maryville has to offer. Like other business owners in Maryville, Keitha Clapp is experienced in her work and strives to build a family-like atmosphere every day. I've owned the store for 18 years now. It was an existing store when I bought it. It's been in Maryville since the late 50s, so it's been an established store. Being a part of Make It Maryville has been really rewarding because we all work together to try to make Maryville grow. I have really great customers and we get to become a part of their families and they become part of our families. Like Nancy, she just told my daughter earlier that she knew when I was pregnant with her and so it just is wonderful to be able to be a part of the community and and watch everybody grow. And Make It Maryville is definitely something that's going to be here to stay. Um, it's going to be here to focus specifically on our small businesses. I'm big on economic development, so you know that ties in a lot with Make It Maryville. We encourage, you know, the shoppers to come in, and the businesses start to thrive. Then other businesses will come in, and then you know it's a domino effect. After a long day exploring local yeah, businesses, my next stop was Girl Sergeant to recover. That's perfect. Yep. Appreciate it. Shopping local is important. Not only can it create a community bond, but your heart and your stomach can be filled. To learn more about Make It Maryville, you can click the link in our description box below. For the stories that matter to you, I am Kirsten Stokes with Channel 8 News.
Well, that is all the time we have here at Channel 8 News. But before we go, be sure to click on the links below to rewatch certain sections of our show and find some information about upcoming events mentioned in this episode. We also want to hear from you guys on these stories, so leave a comment below. And be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notifications button for all the latest news, updates, and other content right here on our YouTube page at KNWT TV. From all of us here at Channel 8 News and for the stories that matter to you, I'm Kirsten Stokes. And I'm Alexis Kuhner. And, and have, have a great, great night. night.